Senator Matt Schmidt carried the silica sand mine legislation. It was eventually rolled into a larger omnibus bill. He's here now to discuss the provisions that did make it through. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Great to be here, Julie. So, Senator, let's begin with your the scaled back proposal that was passed. You've stated in the past that you weren't necessarily married to the legislation and you wanted to create something that worked for people. Which provisions did you feel needed to remain intact? Well, we put forward a more comprehensive package towards the beginning of session, really to get the conversation started, to get a number of ideas on the table, and to work those ideas through the committee process. And obviously, there was a lot of discussion at several stops along the way. And what we came out with uh, is different in many regards, but a lot of the themes remained. And some of the overriding goals that we had was to define state uh, roles for our agencies, to get them involved, bring them to the table. Also, to provide some resources for our local decision makers so that they, uh, they didn't have to go out and hire consultants, they, they could really uh, tap into some, some state resources, and also to set a path forward for making decisions and permitting. And I said this a lot during the course of the session, and I, I, uh, I continue to say, it. we've got to get this right. We've got to be intentional about what we're doing, know what we're getting into, and, and leave room for, for silica sand mining in southeastern Minnesota, but make sure that if we do it, we, uh, we do it well, and that we're, pro we're protecting the most, uh, I guess, uh, sensitive areas in our region. And which parts are you glad did remain intact? The DNR permitting process? Well, I think, I think and that was late to the discussion, the, the one mile setback, if you will, that triggers a, a mandatory DNR permit for uh, uh, mining within one mile of trout streams. I think that's very important and arguably the most important aspect of our of our legislation. Also, I think the, the technical advisory uh, uh, teams that were put together that are comprised of state agency experts, they're going to be a tremendous uh, uh, tool for local decision makers as they uh, grapple with putting in place uh, you know, model ordinances and also making decision making processes on, on specific uh, mine permitting uh, applications. So I think in those two things right there are very important. Also we, uh, we uh, have some rulemaking authority for, uh, for the agencies to, uh, to take a good hard look at uh, w you know, water quality, air quality standards. And I think that the sum, you know, uh, I guess, uh, whole of, of what we came out with is, is a pretty good package. Uh, of course, I think the work just begins in, in the details here. And that's why, you know, the work is not done. We have to keep an eye on agencies and make sure that the standards and the processes that are put in place are, are meaningful. And we'll talk a bit more about that in just a moment. But there are still some concerns about contaminants in the trout streams and in springs. We talked a little bit about the one mile setback, but do you think your legislation goes far enough to protecting the water? Well, I have to tell you, we we fought for everything that was in that legislation, and I'm, I'm proud of what we left the session with. But I think your question gets to a point that uh, we're not done, and we have to we have to hold our agencies accountable and make sure that the standards and the uh, and the I guess the processes that are set up are truly meaningful. And uh, and I think DNR, for instance, has uh, a lot of leeway in terms of how they set up the uh, the permitting process and what that permit means. We don't want it to be a rubber stamp uh, for any permit that comes in. We also don't want it to be an artificial barrier that would not allow for any mining within a mile of trout streams. There's there's a balance here, and I think that's what we're asking DNR to. Uh, to strike. Let's talk a little bit about the two-year moratorium that at one point was in place. The governor didn't support that. Now a lot of the authority to place any kind of a moratorium on silica sand mining is with local governments, local units of governments. Critics are arguing that not having a streamlined statewide system, particularly with the moratoriums, has resulted in kind of a piecemeal approach to the issue, sure. not comprehensive. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, having a comprehensive approach and a regional-based uh, approach to this, uh, this challenge was something that we set out uh, for. And I think the, the package that we left with, bringing DNR, PCA, and Department of Health, Transportation to the table to engage on this issue is very important. But we also wanted to balance that state role with uh, empower local government uh, power. And, and I think that our local units of government now have a value proposition. Have, are we bringing enough expertise, new information to the table for them to essentially hit the pause button again, or uh, maybe for a six month or a one year uh, local moratorium? If they think that they have the answers they need, well then that's a decision that they're ultimately gonna make. And that was a you know, balance that we were, we were trying to strike here, is, is how do you bring the state in uh, to offer expertise, additional resources to facilitate the, the permitting process, and also give local decision makers, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to say the final say, but certainly a voice in this in this uh, process. And when you look at the DNR's role in this permitting of one mile setbacks from trout streams, that's a significant role. I mean, if you actually look at the map of the affected areas in southeastern Minnesota, that's significant. So I, I think that uh, that's a meaningful piece of legislation there that, that we have, a provision of our legislation, I should say. And I think when you couple that with uh, with the resources we're bringing to bear for local units of government. I think it's a good balance, and I, I think this can work. 
Senator, I want to look ahead, if we can, just a little bit. Since the session ended, President Obama came out with his energy plan. It's essentially calling for more natural gas and less coal. Now, silica sand is used to help extract nat natural, or natural gas from shale. Do you think, it's already business that's growing, but do you think that now it's po posed to just explode? And if so, how do you even try to determine what the impacts can be to Southwest Mar or Southeast Mar Minnesota? I think the, the, the picture that you paint here uh, really explains why we took the time in this session uh, to get this right, to, to define state rules, to have a better understanding of what we're getting into. Uh, a couple months ago, we, we had a, an article come out in the Star Tribune, and it was widely reported that the, uh, the natural gas and the oil uh, uh, reserves uh, in the Bakken, for instance, and in similar place up in North Dakota, two to three times what we expected. And to me, that says that there's going to be a long-term demand for, for silica sand or other propens. And right now, silica sand is the most most uh, economical profit uh, to, to use in, in the hydraulic fracturing process. So we've got to be prepared for, uh, I think, a continued demand. Uh, if you talk to folks in the industry, they think it's, uh, the, the demand for silica sand probably already peaked, and you see that in the prices for sand ha having uh, gone down over the last year or so. But I think there's going to be a continued demand for it, and I'm just proud that we're taking the time right now to try to get ahead of this. Uh, I've made the, the comparison to Western Wisconsin a lot, and I think it's apt. You know, in a matter of two years, they went from less than a dozen uh, uh, silica sand operations to over 100. And in, in Minnesota, if we see that kind of growth, it's going to be intentional. We're going to know what we're getting into. And uh, I think we're going to avoid a lot of the pitfalls and problems that Western Wisconsin is now grappling with. And uh, that being said, I don't think we're going to see 100 you know, mines pop up in the course of the next year or two. I think uh, we're, we're sending a strong signal here that in Minnesota, we want to be intentional about it. We want to send signals to, uh, to industry and local units of government where the most appropriate places for sand mining are and, and where the more sensitive areas that need to be protected lie. So, Senator, a bit earlier you mentioned that the work is not done. So what's your personal approach here when it comes to silica sand mining? Are you going to just kind of take a step back and see what issues arise and maybe address those as they come? Or do you have some things in, um, specifically in mind for next session? Well, as I mentioned, I'm proud of what we accomplished in the 2013 legislative session with regard to silica sand mining. But the work is just beginning in many regards. We gave uh, our state agencies and departments uh, some rulemaking authority, and we've got to make sure that they follow through and put in place uh, you know, the appropriate safeguards to get this right. And that's something that I'll be spending a good amount of time on, just making sure that uh, I guess that we have the follow through, so to speak. Uh, there's a lot of issues out there competing for time with our, uh, our hardworking uh, employees, and uh, I think we've got to just make sure that this, this gets the, uh, the attention it deserves. So that's one element, and then I think staying involved and in, uh, in, uh, in touch with uh, local stakeholders uh, as this, uh, I guess, uh, situation, if you will, uh, kind of changes on the, on the ground. This is very much a, a live t uh, issue that uh, has uh, a lot of complexities to it, and just talking to our local units of government, uh, various uh, stakeholders, businesses, and also uh, landowners, and, 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 and of course our uh, state agencies and, and experts up here in St. Paul. So we'll continue to, to monitor it, um, but uh, as we move forward into the 2014 legislative session, I, I do look forward to getting into some of my other priorities. Uh, one thing I'd really like to spend some time on is you know, 21st century infrastructure, talking about telecommunications and broadband, and, and just uh, how we can leverage those sorts of assets for, uh, for rural economic development in, in Minnesota. So there's a lot to do here, and uh, I, I look forward to, to balancing it and, uh, and to continuing to work on our, our, our agenda. All right, and we look forward to having you on talking about some different issues then come next session. Can't so. wait, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Senator, we appreciate it. Thanks.